Hello and welcome to Mantra Snacks, soul candy that'll melt your stress away. It's Kizma from Illumination Academy, a place to get the mindset to get your life in business set. And I am so excited you're here because this particular snack is near and dear to my heart. Why? We're talking about chocolate cake indulgence. Chocolate is my all-time favorite food, whether it's an ice cream cake or cookies or whatever. But what happens when you have too much chocolate? You kind of overindulge and the pleasure is diminished. And that's really the theme of this snack is how to increase pleasure of whether it's chocolate or vanilla, maybe it's sunset, sunrise, the full moon or a crescent moon, sex, maybe it's a glass of wine or a walk on the beach or a hike into the mountains. Perhaps it's your children or your partner, your spouse, your best friend. Hey, maybe it's getting into your car and going for a long drive. Perhaps pleasure for you is poetry, a good novel, an autobiography, a great TV show, or a movie. There's so many ways that we as human beings on this planet gain pleasure. Now, the one big issue with all of these things and so much more is that they are in the external world. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Like, we're here. We have these senses, your sight, your smell, your your taste, your hearing, touch. Senses are here to, are given to us to be utilized, to be enjoyed. But any way to increase pleasure is when we enjoy just a little bit less. So let me talk about it this way. We were in India, Nick and I, several years ago, and we had really the most wonderful opportunity to go to Chennai and stay with our teacher, our guru, Swami Parthasarathy, at their family apartment. And this meant we got to eat meals with him and be in the apartment. And the there were so many like amazing foods to take part in at every meal. But Nick was all about the mangoes because he really hadn't had too many mangoes before. And the mangoes in India are juicy and sweet and just so decadent. Talk about pleasure. They're over the top filled with pleasure. So he started eating a lot of mangoes. And Swamiji would just kind of look at him every meal and just smile. And finally, (laughs) one of the gals kept bringing mangoes to Nick and he's like, I just don't think I can eat anymore. And Swamiji laughed. He's like, yep, neutralization. And we were like, what's that? It's like any time you have too much of a good thing, you neutralize, you lose the pleasure of it. This can be with a food, it can be with a person, it can be with an event. You neutralize. So in essence, the way to increase pleasure is to have less of that very thing, especially if it's a food or even a person. I mean, look at it this way. If you're around your spouse, your partner, your kids, your boyfriend, girlfriend, best friend, whatever, all the time you start to kind of get annoyed with one another. This is when people start getting nitpicky and perhaps treating one another with less kindness and less respect and and less consideration. Because they're neutralizing, they're going beyond neutralize, they're kind of tired of you. So I'm not saying move out of your house. I'm certainly not saying leave your loved ones, but look at how often you're with them in a way that isn't meaningful. And then create some space, you know, with your your partner. Just be together rather than in front of the TV or do something separate, you know, one day a week. Look at how you can create space or when you are together, perhaps you're just simply reading books or maybe you're listening to music. It's not all about the entangled conversation or needing to be with that person. Anytime you use the word need, it comes from a weakened space. Respect them, love them, really appreciate every moment that you're with them. You will be so much happier in your relationship. What about your children? Oh my gosh. When those kids come home from school, avoid asking them a bunch of questions. Because think about it, when you were little and your parents started asking questions, what'd you do? You went, I don't know. I don't know. And you really wanted to just hightail it to your bedroom and shut the door. Simply be with your kids. Hey, Betty, how was your day? And stop there 
and just be with them. Let them start to ask you questions. Now, when it comes to foods, there's a big issue right now with many people that I talk to with sugar. And of course, we see addictions not just with sugar, but with alcohol, drugs, cigarettes. Here's what I want to share with you. I actually believe the addiction is far more than just the sugar, the alcohol, the cigarettes, that chemical addiction. I believe that the addiction is the moment you put, whether it's the sugar in your mouth, the sip of wine, or hopefully you're not a smoker, but if you ever were, you know what I'm talking about. If you know someone, a smoker will take that first puff and everything is bliss. And that, my friend, is what humans are addicted to. That moment of bliss, whether it's with the cigarette, whether it's with the unfortunate use of drugs, whether it's a bite of gelato with all that sugar that just makes you feel like, oh, I'm okay, or maybe it's that first sip of wine at the end of a very busy day, you're like, I got this, I'm just going to numb out. That's what humans end up being addicted to. So guess what? They lose the pleasure of the gorgeous wine or really beautifully made dessert that might be vegan and sugar-free and gluten-free. Never mind the cigarettes and forget the drugs. Alcohol, just use it sparingly. But appreciate it. If you are going to that substance to numb out or to feel something, the pleasure is simply in that moment where you numb out or you feel something. And it will never be enough, ever. You are trying to fill a void that is internal with an external substance. So the addiction begins. The overusage begins. Even if you're not addicted, if you're overusing, overingesting, the pleasure will diminish. Now, you might ask, well, how the heck do I fill that void? That's why you're here. The void internally is one of those things about being human. It's what lights the fire in us to be on the quest, to be on the path of seeking the truth of understanding that, yes, there's all these beautiful external things that create pleasure. I love it, but it's not the be all and the end all. The true pleasure, the truth, the essence is within me. So as you gaze at the moon, as you look at the stars, as you walk on the beach and feel the wind or hear the waves, or as you hike up into the woods or you eat your favorite food, or perhaps you're with your most beloved people ever, understand that these are elements of your world that are interconnected to you. But when you're around any of that too much, you will fail to see the absolute miracle in it. So as you begin this quest of truth, of brilliance, of sparkle, of shimmer in your life, increase your pleasure. By number one, being present when you indulge in whatever it is you're going to indulge in. Really taste every taste, every sip. Or when you're with another person, tap your heart, be connected, listen to them. As they're speaking, don't dream off into some other place or look away or start watching TV or certainly please avoid going to your phone Be with them, gaze at them, listen to them. Appreciate that human. As you go outside and you take a walk and it's a beautiful summer day, appreciate every single step. Because soon enough, it might be winter where you live. And then you'll be wishing for summer, right? So the increase of pleasure in your life is to... Lower the use of whatever that thing is that brings you pleasure so that when you have it, you're so appreciative. It is to be so present with those people that you're with, but not attach yourself to them. Avoid that running after an attachment. It is also to sit quietly and to ponder the highest truths. Because when you begin to tap into the higher aspects of the mind and the higher teachings and existence from the supreme contemplation, pleasure is everywhere. And it's not the worldly pleasure. 
It is the mystical and magical and spiritual and aligned pleasure that keeps your energy running from the crown down to your root that allows you to connect with the universe and get the answers that you want from your higher self. It's exhilarating and exalted. It creates prosperity and knowing. It allows you to have a field that is so bright and shiny that people want to be around you, but you can't be around them all the time because you, my friend, need space as well. So take a moment after this little snack and write down what are those things that you might be overindulging in. All right, so if you're having a glass of wine four times a week, cut it down to two or once and really taste every sip. If you're eating a lot of sugar, I guarantee if you wipe that out of your system and four weeks from now you have a beautiful piece of chocolate cake, you're going to so appreciate every bite. If you tend to talk over your spouse or your partner, pause, breathe, just be with them, tap your heart, listen to them. Give your children space. Go for beautiful walks. Breathe in the air. And always look inward as you do all of this. The synchronicity of whatever you do, when you line it up to a higher aspect, a higher way of being, doing, and having, will bring you the highest pleasure of all. So go out there, my friend, and be a kind human because the world needs you. Namaste.